fell asleep in the car again. <laughs> Hello, I'm Lawrence and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond and one of those memos pertains to our roads. Specifically, some of the things we encounter while traversing those roads. Because while we can all have a laugh at each country's propensity for driving on the wrong side of the road, we've been too busy not noticing what's around us. And so in just a moment, I and my wife, who fell asleep in the house like a regular person, are going to go for a little drive to look at eight things that I only encountered after hitting the American road. And so while we're waiting, if you're the sort of person who likes learning about British versus American cultural differences and you haven't had a chance to subscribe to this channel, do that now. Now. In the meantime, here she is. Let's get going. Shoes? Shoes. What shoes? This was the weirdest thing. When I first moved to America, probably in the first year, I kept seeing shoes dangling from telephone wires. And it was weird, because at first I thought, oh, that was just somebody drunk who threw them up there. And then I saw them about four or five times and thought, maybe it's the same family who like to climb these things and just spontaneously combust. I, like, I've seen it before, You've but I don't it. know why people do that. <laughs> it's weird. I didn't see this in Britain, and I see it all the time here. But maybe there's another reason behind it. I'm going to look into that in just a moment. Okay, I lied. I actually became aware of this phenomenon before moving to America. I saw it in the film Big Fish with Ewan McGregor, however, since the 2003 film leans heavily into fairy tale, I just assumed that shoe dangling was part of that. But apparently it's fairly common throughout most of America, even if Americans can't agree on the reasons for it. In some regions, shoe tossing apparently commemorates the end of school or the start of a marriage. Others connect the practice to the military, while in major cities like Los Angeles or here in Chicago, popular legend likes to link it to the activity of gangs. Either way, that's why I don't wear shoes with laces. That and I'm irredeemably lazy. Speaking of films, that brings us on perfectly to our next entry, which is Water Towers. And at this point, I can visualise Uncle Toby frantically typing away on his keyboard saying something like, Ooh, Lawrence, what do Water Towers have to do with films? And also, we have Water Towers in the UK. What's your point? Well, let me address both points one by one. The film is What's Eating Gilbert Grape. Right, we've all seen that scene where Leonardo da Vinci, DiCaprio, climbs up a water tower and the whole town tries to get him down. And watching that film growing up in England, I could couldn't help but notice two things. One, that the water tower appeared to be quite top heavy, and two, that it was entirely made of metal. You see, typically water towers in Britain are these concrete brutalist looking buildings that look like something from a scary film, which is why my brother and I had nightmares. But in America, it turns out that the water tower in What's Eating Gilbert Grape is a fairly old style one. The ones I see around towns here in the Midwest look just as metallic and even more top heavy. And the fun thing about American water towers is that they actually help you pinpoint where you are because in the event that your gps goes down you can simply look out of your window and realize you've ended up in salem thankfully this is just stock footage from my provider and i'm not a witch or living in the past plus that was salem ohio not salem massachusetts oh america Oh, there's something we don't have a lot of in Britain. It is what looks like a huge bouncing castle, but is in fact a sort of, well, kind of a blow up building, an inflatable building. And I think when I first saw one of these, I just assumed that's where America stores all of the aliens. But it's actually a lot more innocent than that. What usually happens inside these big blow up buildings? Tennis. Tennis. It's a sports and recreation centre, and these things are sort of all over the Midwest. And even on our honeymoon, when we went to the Eagle's Nest, which is a restaurant high up in Indianapolis, we overlooked the RCA Dome when it was still around, and that was similar looking, it was just larger. I've just realised I do occasionally see English footballers honing their skills in domes like this. So since I left the UK, perhaps they took off? You know, not literally. That would be chaos for air traffic control but they do look like they could. In the past, my subscribers have heard me talk about how American roads are often lined with billboards. But in the interest of not wanting to cover old ground again, I'd like to talk about a different type of board entirely. 
notice boards. Specifically, notice boards that you tend to see outside of churches or schools. And again, calm down, Toby. I know we have those in Britain. What we don't have, or at least didn't when I lived there, are electronic notice boards. These things are everywhere. At school, it might say something like, ooh, this week the kids are having a fun run. Or if it's outside of a church, Jesus is returning this Tuesday. Bring water. Whereas in Britain, if we have notice boards like this, they're probably handwritten in chalk or written on a piece of paper with an arrow through it. There's a Thai place over here next to Trader Joe's. It's really good. It you is. Go and eat Take a break from the video and do that. Yeah. Before I do that though, I just want to talk about traffic lights. In America, you have traffic lights that are literally hanging, seemingly by a thread a lot of the time. I mean, it's by multiple cables, but I think visually that's probably one of those things that stands out the most when you first visit America and you are on the road. That and the size of the cars. And then you have traffic lights that are on a pole, but it's a horizontal pole, and it just looks like the whole thing will come down if there's a bad storm. Whereas in Britain, our traffic lights usually sit on a vertical pole at the side of the road. Personally, I don't care about this either way. I just want to know what you call them. Because in America, I've heard traffic light, stop and go light, and just stop light. Let me know in the comments below. When I first moved to the United States, there was this one occasion when my wife asked me to meet her at a strip mall. And being new to the country, I misinterpreted what that meant and ended up at my first ever pole dancing class. But eventually I learned what strip malls are and we all had a very, very good laugh at me. For those of you that don't know, a strip mall is basically a mini mall with a parking lot slash car park and an array of shops and or eating establishments next to that car park. And they all follow a similar pattern. There'll be one or two multinational chains like a Subway or a Starbucks surrounded by lesser known local places and a vaping store. Now in Britain I've come to learn that strip malls do in fact exist but not quite in the same way and don't usually go by strip malls. But the major thing to note about our equivalent of it is they're just not as ubiquitous. And Uncle Toby ubiquitous just means omnipresent and omnipresent means that something is all over the place. A bit like your comments in more ways than one. I've just remembered something. For years after moving here, I was confused by the sight of something that I would see by the side of highways. And I'm not just talking about that creepy doll I saw off I-65. I'm talking about weird domes. They crop up every now and again, and they look like the sort of building into which nobody ever goes in and nobody ever comes out. And I swear, before making this video, I went my entire American life without knowing what they are. It turns out that they're a storage facility for salt, which I suppose Chicago needs a lot of in the winter. Is it that kind of salt? I don't know. What I do know is that when you have to track one down for the purposes of content, they're so mysterious that you can't find one. Or are they? We actually found one. We were looking around, but the maps weren't very useful. There is a salt storage facility. I don't see any salt or pepper. Anyone who's ever seen an American film that involves a police car chase has probably seen one of these get destroyed. Yes, it's an American fire hydrant, and I dare say that many Americans, including myself, have lived here so long that we've become completely desensitized to their existence. But the truth is, you can barely drive a block in my area of the world without seeing them hanging out on a street corner. My favorite is when they're painted in such a way that they end up looking like a human member of the fire brigade. But growing up in Britain, I never really saw our fire hydrants because they're hidden and underground. The fire brigade accesses it with, I don't know, some sort of magic key and fights the fire that way. And you might be thinking, how do they know where it is? Simple. If you've ever been to Britain, you might have noticed these little pillars containing the letter H. This is just a marker letting everybody know where the hydrant is. I just wanted to explain that for those of you who wondered why British action films don't have the trope of the damaged hydrant. Anyway, most American hydrants look like this. I would get up close, but I don't own it. Plus, it's covered in dog piss. Arthur, can you smell Penelope on that? Such a romantic story. And that's it for this episode. I'm Lawrence Brown. You can follow me on Twitter and or threads. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel so that I don't have to. Here's a video that you're going to watch next. And a big shout out to my ponderers who make these videos possible. If you would like to become a ponderer and gain access to my secret live stream, as well as my secret video series, Diary of a YouTube Sensation, you can do so today at patreon.com slash lost in the pond or by clicking the join button below. Until the next video. Goodbye.